Hi Rail Lovers! Today we start a new series of videos related to Mega Rail projects. In this series we will try to present and discuss some railway engineering masterpieces regardless of whether they have been completed or are still undergoing. Our today's topic is one of the greatest engineering feats Turkey has ever attempted to realize – the Marmaray project. By the way, if you like our content, don't forget to subscribe to Railways Explained and turn on notification bell in case you want to receive notifications when we publish our future videos. Now, combining the names of the Sea of Marmara and Ray, which means rail in Turkish, the Marmara project includes a 13.6 km or 8.5 miles long undersea railway tunnel and the upgrade of 63 km or 39 miles of suburban rail lines with the aim to create a 76.6 km or 47.6 miles high capacity passenger railway line between Gebze on the Asian side of Istanbul and Halkali on the European side. The project also includes the provision of 440 electric multiple units and it is supposed to accommodate incredible 150,000 passengers per hour. The Japan International Cooperation Agency and European Investment Bank have provided major part of financing for this project, while total estimated value is approximately 4 billion US dollars. The plans for similar projects, bridging Europe and Asia by rail, were developed as early as 1860s. However, the technology at the time did not permit the construction of a tunnel under the seabed and the original ideas that were suggested leaned towards a floating type of a tunnel placed on pillars constructed on the seabed. Several ideas were discussed and modified over the decades as technology continued to evolve and became able to accommodate more complex designs. Finally, a comprehensive feasibility study carried out in 1987 showed that a railway mass transit connection from west to east of Istanbul under the Istanbul Strait is actually feasible and also cost-effective. The feasibility studies were then updated few years later and in 1999 the Republic of Turkey and the Japanese Bank for International Cooperation signed a funding agreement for Marmara project. The Marmaray project involved replacing two existing railway tracks on both sides of Istanbul Strait with the three tracks and connecting each other with a tunnel consisting of 9.8 km or 6 miles of a board tunnel constructed using the tunnel boring machine or so-called TBM. Then there is a 2.4 km or 1.5 miles long section built using the cut and cover method and a 1.4 km or 0.87 mile section built as immersed tube tunnel. Also, this tunnel is the deepest immersed tunnel in the world, with the deepest point being approximately 60 meters or 196 feet below the sea level. In addition, this amazing transport project included the construction of three new underground stations, but also the reconstruction of 37 surface stations, 165 bridges, 63 culverts, yards, workshops, maintenance facilities, an operations control center, completely new electrical and mechanical systems, and a mentioned procurement of 440 units of modern rolling stock. We will now put our focus to 13.6 km long railway tunnel. It consists of the two single-track tunnels with the three underground railway stations – Yenikapi, Sirkeci and Uskudar. Commuter service was first introduced only from Irilik Chesmeshi station on the Asian side to Kazli Chesme station on the European, stopping only at three underground stations along the way. However, the service now covers the complete line from Gebze to Halkali. The construction of the undersea tunnel began in 2004. It was carried out by Turkish-Japanese consortium led by Taisei Corporation with the total value of works being approximately 2.8 billion US dollars. The Marmaray Tunnel was completed on September 2008 with a formal ceremony to mark the completion held on the next month. Let's say a few words about the technology of construction itself. Most of the tunnel was constructed using so-called shield tunneling method. As soon as engineers started excavation, the considerable amounts of water and solids started flowing into excavation pit. 
To solve this issue, the decision has been made by the engineers to use a temporary sealing technique of ground freezing in order to get the tunnel boring machine with a diameter of almost 8 meters or 26 feet safely to the target position in the pit. Liquid nitrogen was then introduced in drill holes around the area of the tunnel boring machine. The diaphragm wall in the pit was dismantled and a steel structure filled with concrete was installed as the entrance way. After the frost body was thawed on the mantle, the tunnel boring machine was able to safely enter the last meters of the pit. The technique was then used to expand the entry and also for the final sealing. In addition, engineers used fire-resistant concrete that was specially developed in Norway to enhance the safety on this project. Regarding the undersea part of the tunnel, the immersed tubes were outfitted with temporary bulkheads to allow them to float while the insides remained dry. The segments were then held in place with temporary supports until the foundation was completed, after which the trench is finally backfilled. A total of 1.3 million cubic yards was dredged out of the Istanbul Strait and carried to a confined disposal site created specially for this project. It's important to mention, considering the high seismic activity of the region, the earthquake safety played a significant role in the design and the construction of Marmaray Tunnel. Also, the line is equipped with both the ERTMS, European Railway Traffic Management System, and CBTC, Communications-Based Train Control System, which is technologically unique solution. The advanced solution provided by Siemens Mobility Spain includes the ERTMS Futur technology that is already in service on the Turkish high-speed line Ankara Konya, as well as the train guard system, aimed at maximizing network capacity and true output. As a curiosity, the completion of the project was delayed due to significant archaeological discoveries near Sirkeci with artifacts dating back almost 8,000 years. While archaeologists were excited with this discovery, it forced engineers to hold off the project for a few years, inevitably prolonging the schedule and also increasing the total costs. The archaeological gold mine comprises of the remains of a Byzantine port, the traces of the city wall of Constantine the Great, and the remains of several ships, including what appears to be the only ancient or early medieval galley ever discovered. In addition, the excavation uncovered the oldest evidence of human settlements in this city. Okay, it is time for the traffic aspect of the story. We know Marmaray turned out to be designed primarily for passenger traffic helping to connect European and Asian Istanbul metro lines while cutting the travel times from Gebze to Halkali from previous more than 3 hours to a little more than one and a half. But what about the freight? Is Marmaray Tunnel open for freight traffic? Well, in February 2010, Railway Gazette International reported that the tunnel's administrators were hiring consultants to analyze options for carrying freight traffic through the tunnel. Although not officially announced by the TCDD, which is Turkish National Railways by the way, the Prime Minister and some officers stated several times that quote, Marmaray will help to bring back the use of the term Silk Road by allowing freight trains to move between Europe and China. End quote. However, in years to come, this didn't show to be the case. Eventually, the freight trains, free of dangerous goods, are now able to move through the tunnel, but only in period when commuter services are not operating, which is between 1 and 5 a.m. Also, 7th November 2019 brought the novelty of the first Chinese freight train to reach Europe through Marmaray Tunnel, carrying 42 TEU of electronic goods in transit from China to Czech Republic. The service, organized by China Railway Express, had taken 12 days to travel from Xi'an through Kazakhstan, across the Caspian Sea to Azerbaijan, and then to Turkey via Bakut Bilisi Cars Line, which was inaugurated in 2017. In addition, on May 2020, the first domestic freight train has passed through the Marmaray Tunnel carrying 32 containers of plastic raw materials from Gaziantep in southeast Turkey to Chorlu in the European part of the country. Regarding this event, the Turkish Minister of Transport Adil Karaismailoglu said freight train services through the tunnel would replace the existing rail and ferry route via the ports of Derinje and Tekirda, thus significantly cutting the costs. And, for the end of this video, we would like to conclude that the city of Istanbul, like many others, 
is being crippled by heavy road traffic, air pollution and limited high-capacity transport systems. The Marmaray project was aimed to resolve many of these issues by providing a rail link beneath the Istanbul Strait, and for example, in 2019 only, it contributed to Istanbul Transit System with a 124 million transported passengers. Beside that, much more is expected from this project in the future in terms of both the passenger and the freight traffic, especially within the context of One Belt One Road initiative and the transport of freight between China and Europe. We will definitely discuss One Belt One Road initiative in some of the future videos on Railways Explained. For now, thank you very much for your attention, we hope you enjoyed and learned something new about the railways of the world. Don't forget to like this video and for more interesting railway stories, make sure to subscribe to our channel. Goodbye.